Hi everyone. HMS Victory stands as one of the most iconic symbols of British naval power. Launched in 1765, this majestic ship played a pivotal role in shaping the course of history. Most famously, Victory served as Admiral Lord Nelson's flagship during the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805, a battle that changed the fate of Europe. In this video, we'll explore the vital role HMS Victory played in this legendary conflict. We'll take a closer look at its innovative design, the crucial moments it witnessed during the battle, and the enduring legacy it leaves behind as a symbol of British resilience and naval supremacy. HMS Victory was launched in 1765, designed as the most advanced warship of its time. Built during a period of rising tensions between Britain and its European rivals, the ship was intended to assert British naval dominance. With a length of over 220 feet and carrying up to 100 cannons spread across three decks, Victory was a formidable force on the seas. Her firepower allowed her to unleash devastating broadsides against enemy ships, while her robust oak hull offered strong defense in battle. Before Trafalgar, HMS Victory had already proven her worth in earlier engagements, including the battles of Ushant and Cape St. Vincent, solidifying her place as a cornerstone of the Royal Navy's fleet. The ship's blend of power, speed, and strategic design made her a crucial asset for Britain's defence and a perfect flagship for Admiral Nelson at Trafalgar. The Battle of Trafalgar, fought on October 21, 1805, stands as one of the most defining moments in naval history. This monumental clash took place during the height of the Napoleonic Wars, a time when Napoleon Bonaparte sought to dominate Europe. His ultimate ambition was to challenge Britain's control of the seas and pave the way for an invasion of the British Isles. The stakes could not have been higher. For Napoleon, control of the English Channel meant a direct path to conquering Britain, the last major obstacle to his European hegemony. For Britain, it was a fight for survival. Losing command of the seas would expose the island nation to invasion and dismantle the Royal Navy's reputation as the world's leading naval force. The opposing fleets represented immense power, the Franco-Spanish coalition boasted 33 ships to Britain's 27. Nelson had crafted a daring strategy designed to upend traditional naval warfare. Instead of engaging the enemy in parallel lines, as was customary, Nelson planned to divide the Franco-Spanish fleet, cutting it into smaller, more manageable segments. HMS Victory, his flagship, would lead one of two attack columns, heading directly into the enemy's lines. As the battle began off the coast of Cape Trafalgar in southwest Spain, these tactical innovations set the stage for a decisive encounter. At the heart of the British fleet on the morning of October 21, 1805, stood HMS Victory, not just as Admiral Nelson's flagship, but as the central figure in a revolutionary battle strategy. Admiral Nelson, renowned for his boldness and strategic brilliance, was determined to deliver a decisive blow to the combined French and Spanish fleets. He knew that the outcome of this battle would secure Britain's naval supremacy and thwart Napoleon's plans for an invasion. To achieve this, Nelson devised a tactic that was both daring and unconventional for its time, the breaking of the enemy's line. In most naval battles of the era, fleets engaged each other in long, parallel lines, exchanging broadsides in a test of firepower and endurance. Nelson, however, sought a more aggressive and direct approach. Instead of mirroring the enemy's formation, he split his own fleet into two columns, each of which would drive straight into the Franco-Spanish line. This tactic aimed to slice through the enemy's ranks, breaking their coordinated defense and throwing the opposing ships into chaos. By isolating smaller sections of the enemy fleet, Nelson could engage them one by one, forcing close quarters combat where British naval gunnery and training could dominate. Leading this bold assault was HMS Victory, with Nelson himself at its helm. As the flagship of the British fleet, Victory took its place at the head of the northern column, bearing the full weight of the initial charge. The ship was a symbol of strength and leadership, 
but it was also a magnet for enemy fire. Charging directly into the heart of the Franco-Spanish line, Victory was the first to engage the enemy head-on, coming under heavy fire from multiple ships. Despite the barrage, Victory pressed forward, breaking through the line and targeting the French flagship Bucentaur, delivering a devastating broadside that crippled the enemy's command. Victory's actions in this crucial moment created the opening Nelson needed. By breaking the line, the British fleet was able to envelop isolated enemy ships, turning the tide of the battle. Nelson's strategy, executed perfectly aboard Victory, was key to the British success. The close quarters engagements that followed played into the hands of the well-trained British sailors, who capitalized on the confusion within the enemy ranks. HMS Victory, at the forefront of this innovative strategy, played a decisive role in disrupting the cohesion of the French and Spanish fleets. Nelson's strategy was as much psychological as it was tactical. By breaking the line and forcing the enemy into disarray, he demonstrated the superior agility and discipline of the British Navy. The speed and precision with which Victory and the other British ships executed this plan overwhelmed the Franco-Spanish fleet, leading to one of the most famous naval victories in history. As the early morning fog lifted on October 21, 1805, HMS Victory led the British fleet into battle, cutting through the waves with purpose and precision. At the head of the northern column, Victory charged directly toward the combined Franco-Spanish fleet, under the command of Admiral Nelson. The plan was clear, but the risk was immense. Nelson's strategy relied on a headlong assault that would place Victory at the very center of the action, exposing it to concentrated enemy fire. Yet, it was a risk Nelson and his crew were willing to take, understanding that Victory's leadership would be crucial to the outcome of this historic engagement. As victory drew closer to the enemy, it quickly became the target of intense bombardment. The French and Spanish ships unleashed a torrent of cannon fire upon her, striking her masts, sails, and hull. Despite the ferocity of the attack, victory held her course, plowing through the thick smoke and shattering waves. The ship's crew, well trained and battle hardened, remained calm and disciplined, preparing for the moment when they would return fire. That moment came as Victory approached the French flagship Bucentaur. In a calculated maneuver, Victory positioned itself just off Bucentaur's stern, where it could deliver a devastating broadside. With a single order, Victory's cannons erupted in a deafening volley, unleashing a storm of iron that tore through the French ship's hull and decks. The damage was catastrophic, Bucentaur's rudder was destroyed its masts shattered, and hundreds of its crew were killed or wounded in the barrage. Victory had disabled the enemy's flagship in one decisive blow, leaving it vulnerable to further attacks. But Victory's work was far from over. The ship immediately engaged several other French and Spanish vessels, enduring withering fire from all sides. Despite the chaos around them, Victory's crew remained resolute, continuing to fire broadside after broadside, crippling enemy ships and clearing the path for the rest of the British fleet. In the midst of this fierce combat, a tragic event unfolded that would forever be remembered as one of the most poignant moments in British naval history. As Admiral Nelson stood on Victory's quarterdeck, surveying the battle and directing his men, he was struck by a musket shot fired from the French ship Redutop. The bullet passed through his shoulder and lodged in his spine, leaving him mortally wounded. Nelson was carried below decks, where he would spend the final hours of his life, still focused on the unfolding battle. Despite Nelson's critical injury, the battle raged on. Victory's officers and crew continued to execute his plans with precision, refusing to yield to the chaos and destruction around them. The ship, now a symbol of defiance and determination, pressed forward, engaging ship after ship. By the time the smoke cleared and the battle began to wane, it was clear that Nelson's strategy had worked. The Franco-Spanish fleet lay shattered, their ships either captured, destroyed, or in retreat. Even as Nelson lay dying below decks, victory stood as a testament to his brilliance. His final words, Thank God I have done my duty, echoed through the hearts of those aboard the ship.
Though Nelson's life came to an end that day, his legacy, and the legacy of HMS Victory, had been immortalized in one of the greatest naval triumphs in history. The intense combat Victory faced, from disabling key enemy ships like Bucentaur to withstanding concentrated fire from all directions, was crucial to the British fleet's success. HMS Victory, battered but unbowed, led the charge and carried Britain to a victory that would change the course of the Napoleonic Wars, ensuring Britain's dominance over the seas for generations to come. Thanks for watching.